They're plebeians. Don't get me wrong, it's totally okay if you're a pleb. Most people are. Lots of people lack sophistication and are perfectly content with being uncultured. It's pretty normal. I am not the type that looks down on the common man. But ask me to descend from my chambers to wallow in the muck of degeneracy with the unwashed masses? <laughs> I think not. What I'm getting at here is that using a website that spoils the future cat points defeats the purpose of Random Assault and Secure and besmirches its good name. And I'll be d if I'll sit idly by and watch the degens befoul my favorite game mode. Why do I like it when the flags aren't as predictable? Lots of reasons. For starters, it increases the fog of war, and that's a fun challenge to navigate. You don't know where the enemy is likely to be, so you only have a sort of gist from intel and comms from your team. Maybe some people don't appreciate the complexity that such a known unknown adds to the game, but I do, and in my opinion, it completely changes the way the game unfolds in the early stages. It creates a sense of danger zones in the opener, where if you're playing a forward element, you have to use your senses to predict where the enemy assets might be as the clock ticks onward. For the sweaty, teamwork-focused teams, it allows for a more dynamic and emergent opening scenario. While some people seek to simplify their FPS experience with deathmatch-style games like the finals, or by playing modded versions of Squad that offer a more arcade-y, shoot-em-up style gameplay loop, what I seek is a more artisan experience. I want hardcore mode, and when you know where the future flags are, it reduces the opening moves to something like, do I rush mid-cap or one flag deeper? To me, that is mundane and is about as complex as a game of checkers. Just follow this to its logical conclusion, and instead of playing AAS with extra steps, just go play AAS. Or maybe just go play checkers. The reason I'm making this video is because I recently got to see what a truly patrician RAAS experience could be. The release of the new map meant that Squad Lanes hasn't been updated yet, so some of my teammates, who were excellent players, suddenly felt like fish out of water when they couldn't use it. And guess who saved the day? Now, opening round strategy might not be interesting to some, but if you play a lot of SL, it starts to feel like a game of chess, and how you play it has a huge impact on the game. It's all about where to commit your pieces. I won't be able to explain it any better than just watching it for yourself, so here's the clip. The context is, I'm running a fully loaded gunboat, and we pushed out with another full squad split between a gunboat and a lodgy boat, which is super valuable. We held at a forward but conservative position, while the team collectively weighed our options as we waited to see where the third cap was going to spawn. It was tense and awesome. Let's get it. All right, one more amount up. We're going to follow the Lodgy boat, so we're going to play this opener slow. We're not going to do a big rush with the boats. We're going to chill. We're going to follow our large Lodgy boat and wait to see how the map develops. I've never played this map, though. Yeah, so I haven't played it in a while. This is a new map for me, too. Yeah, that's fine. Um, you know, it's a new map for everybody. You guys aren't that far behind. It's a complex map. There's a lot of weird shit to go down. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna have the infantry dismount on the radio with the those mark. boats until we know for sure it's not going go in there. Yeah, we're just chilling. Alright, go ahead and dismount. Word. There is a pop point. I'm actually gonna drop a safety island. rally that just in case. Point. But it may not go that right direction. Our squad, our squad is out. Alright, ten four. Okay. No, I just, I played the guy here. What's up, what's up? No, I tried to just follow the guy. No, don't, don't go far. Just stay, stay relatively close. I just don't want everyone to die if the boat gets nuked. Um, we're waiting to see second cap, and then we're going to rush the boat. Alright, it's F12. Um, I'll use my launch sheet to set up the five. I need FTLs to help me mark ship. This is going to be a sweaty one. Five, five Chevron. Yeah, Alright, the next point went north, uh, where's the next point, you know, whoever said that they had played this layer before? It's, I think it's gonna be south, it might go to power point, though, power plant. I'm gonna guess if on... If it doesn't go to power plant, where's it going? Where's next point if it doesn't go to power plant? I'm marking boats, our potential next How points. How does it look like on the east, southeast side? Alright, if it goes to fucking C9, we can grab that. Or anywhere on the southern island. If power it goes to power plant, I'll probably keep the boats out of there. Power plant is hard to take if they get a foothold first. Did I run you over? Can we use a Bible to rush you with the boats if we need to? Uh, yeah. I'd spread them out so we don't all get nuked by the same Vic. There we go. Yeah, we can clean up the speeches with day day type shit. Alright, so, uh, this is gonna be a great round, guys. We're uh, third cap's about to come up. If it's power plant, all the boats are gonna rush it. It's gonna be like D-Day. 
we're going to fan out and find our own little niche and try and rush it. Um, if it doesn't, we're in position to back cap, so we'll see where the map goes. Also, be aware, there's a lot of aqueous enemy vehicles, so they can come out behind us. They can just be floating by like a fucking alligator. Next map is about to pop. Got enemy half north of uh, the second point. Enemy half north of the second point. Shit. Shit. Make sure you guys just fucking cap it. Fuck it. They got a flag. We're gonna rapid response. Six is gonna rapid response with one boat. We're gonna we're gonna hit that half. All right. All right, Raj. We'll stay down here. Uh, we're gonna go attack that enemy half. PowerPoint. Alright, uh, 4 is rushing power plant with boats. We can just jump in if you Alright, 4, uh, 6 is going with 4. Let's go D-Day, boys. Let's go. Hey, mark where you want to land your boat. We should spread out. We should not all be together. Alright, our move marker is where we're going to hammer, hammer. Hammer. I would say everyone dismount. I'm just going to beat you, alright? We just want to get inside. We're the frontal team, so we're going to be the ones taking fire here. Tighten your buttholes. Someone hold my hand. I'm holding it, I got you. I'm going to hold my Johnson. <laughs> Alright, get in there, boys. Alright, bail, bail, bail. For, for China! As far as sweaty pubs go, this is how I want all of my rounds to start. Now, maybe that kind of on-the-fly strategizing doesn't appeal to you, and you'd rather just peek ahead and see the flags in advance, or perhaps you're averse to strategizing at all and would prefer just to turn your brain off and shoot things. That's fine, just please don't be a lane rat in my games. I mean, it's not like I can stop you from using any layer-spoiling websites, but I can chirp about it. If you really need to play with a handicap to beat me, hey, alright, I get it, power to you. But if you're that unable to think outside the box, chances are I'll still be able to outplay you, especially in a game as open-ended as Squad. If you think you're good, beat me without alt-tabbing. Use your brain, your intuition, your communication skills, and your map knowledge. If you are a rat and can't help it, you're also forcing your opponents to use it as well in order to stay competitive. It's a lot like nuclear arms proliferation, of which the logical conclusion is mutually assured destruction. Rise above. It's not just that it's anti-competitive. It's also anti-fun. Revealing the flags robs your team of the chance to hatch up a plan on the fly, which in my opinion doesn't just defeat the purpose of the game mode, but it defeats the entire purpose of playing squad, which is explicitly teamwork oriented. It's like doing a crossword puzzle where the hint is just the answer. It's like playing a game of golf, except that once per hole, you're allowed to pick up the ball and drop it anywhere you want. When you buy a book, are you the type that skips ahead to the last chapter to see how it ends? The best way that I could describe it would be to say that it trivializes the most interesting aspects of that game mode. The idea of not knowing where mid-cap is going to be, let alone the enemy's early caps, gently pushes the team into sticking closer together while the back-capping happens. It leashes your forward elements a bit and punishes over-committing your assets too deep, lest they be too far away from a key fight that might break out of the mid-cap. The resulting fog of war creates tense moments where everyone is collectively using their ears and their eyes to suss out the danger zones where enemy forward elements might be. And when the fight finally does start to break out, things get kinetic real quick. It's fucking awesome. As far as the way it impacts the meta, it seems to me like a gentleman's RAS game would remove the ability to throw haymakers within the first three minutes of the game. You won't be able to as reliably rush the enemy's first two flags. Your success versus failure rate starts to tip away from making that play worth it. You'll know what I mean if you've ever taken a mid-cap stab on a heli rush, only to be stranded as you watch the flags get revealed on the other side of the map. Throwing haymakers will still happen, but they'll connect less often, and they'll punish you more if it fails. Fewer turn 1 critical strikes, fewer turn 1 crippling starts. In general, I think it will allow the board state to develop in a more organic way. That part of the meta will likely become a little bit more skill and knowledge based. Squad Lanes takes all that away and just makes it an awkward version of regular Assault and Secure. I've heard it argued that the responsibility lies with OWI for not making a truly random flag spawn mechanic, and that they should make it truly random and less narrow. I don't entirely hate that idea, but let's be honest, I haven't been playing for that long now, and even still, 
The list of things for OWI to fix is growing, not shrinking. By all means, criticize OWI all you want, but I think that it speaks to a larger issue the community has, which is a sort of learned helplessness. The community would be better served if they just stopped bitching on Discord all day and instead worked to find their own solutions for some things. The modding community is a great example of that right now. They're not waiting on OWI, they're just doing it themselves. I mean, sure, do I love making fun of mods that water down the ICO so that Timmy can still live out his SEAL Team 6 fantasies? You bet your ass I do. But truth be told, I'll gladly support any mod that helps keep my squad free from the likes of no mic marksman pickers, run and gunners, and people to grab the HMG kit and then proceed to play like they're Usain fucking Bolt. Ratting the lanes isn't fixable with a mod, though. It's a culture thing. If you think that OWI should fix the problem by patching it out, can't you just make that exact same argument for ghosting? Yeah, it sucks when people do it, and it's almost impossible to stop. Wouldn't it be better and easier, hear me out, if everybody would just stop doing it? That's how I feel about lane rats. Just stop doing it, and it fixes the problem. Of course, it's natural for people to find a way to win however they can. That's just what you get when you combine the internet with literally anything. If someone could make a website that if you clicked on it, you would automatically win your current round of squad, people would do it, and they would be degenerates. What we need to do is elevate the game of RAS to a more distinguished level. What we need is Gentleman's, gentleman's RAS. RAS. What is Gentleman's RAS? Well, it's just like regular RAS, except without cheating. You can still mark potential flags from memory and from crowdsourcing, and that's to be encouraged. But no alt-tabbing. Call for this in all chat at the start of the round, or the round before. If they cheat, then you get to breathe deep the air of superiority, and then proceed with beating them anyway. Ultimately, I'm pretty optimistic that we can shift the culture on this one because it improves the experience. Strategy decisions shouldn't be scripted. When the only viable ways to rush a cap is by googling the layer first, well, that's pretty lame if you ask me. Over time, I think gentlemen's RAS rules will take root on good servers. So if you consider yourself to be a good squad player, then consider this a formal challenge. Prove it and don't alt-tab out. Loser gets teabagged.